Good morning, New Covenant. Hope all is well. We're here today again, and it's good to be with everybody today. It's a beautiful, hot July the 5th. I hope you all had a wonderful um, 4th of July. I know this was a little different kind of 4th of July this this time we couldn't have the big 4th of July backyard parties and backyard picnics, but it is what it is and we just have to comply with what God is doing and Amen. just wait on God. Amen. And you know, I know some of us are getting impatient, but what can we do? Yep. That's right. That's right, Pastor Cheryl. Amen. Uh, I want to say good morning to uh, New Covenant family, Facebook family. And once again, thank you all for tuning in uh, with us on our live stream service on this morning. It's good uh, to have you all uh, with us here. I want to say this real quickly. I don't want to forget about it. Uh, in between 1230 and 1.30 this afternoon, Pastor Cheryl and I will be at the church. We'll be passing out the communion packs for everyone who want to participate in uh, taking communion on this evening. So we'll be at the church from 1230 to 130 uh, handing out those packs. So make sure you come by. Uh, if you want to drop off your tithe and offering, you can do that as well. But we will be there. Also want to um, say, uh, Pastor Cheryl, that we want to keep the Gosey family in our prayers. Yes. Uh, our minister of music, DeAndre Gosey, his paternal grandmother passed on uh, this past week and uh, we want to keep his father and brother Terrence Gosey Sr. and of course um, uh, Sister Gosey and Terrence Gosey Jr. And, and all of them in our prayers. You know, it's never easy when we uh, have to deal with the passing of one of our loved ones. So uh, brother Gosey and family, we want you to know brother you have our deepest condolences. You all are in our prayers. Amen. I also want to say we just got a, a good you know, testimony, good report on Brother R.J. Smitty. He's doing a lot better, mm -hmm. and we thank God for him. Also, Sister Bimage is doing better uh, from what I understand. So thank God. On this evening at 6 o'clock, we're going to be praying for the sick. If you have any prayer requests, make sure you send us an email. NCCCP at SBCGlobal.net. And uh, I'll repeat that at the end of the uh, service here today. And uh, send us your prayer request. Or you can just go on to your, uh, our app, the uh, New Covenant Christian Church phone app. And uh, we'll send you, uh, uh, send us a prayer request. And uh, we'll get that taken care of for you. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right. Well, I'm going to open up Pastor Cheryl with... Um, with uh, our Psalms number 91 that we read every week. And um, y'all give us, we're trying to get a little situated <laughs> here. Our uh, executive producer, he had to work this morning, so we, we get it taken care of. Get Child, taken care. You, we need somebody. Yeah, yeah, we do. We, do. we need an executive producer that's going to be here. Yeah, amen. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so Psalms number 91. Uh, we'll be reading from that, which is what we read every every service. Amen. And uh, and then Pastor Cheryl will come back and exhort you all and pray, and then we'll get into the Word. Brother DeAndre has music prepared. We're gonna put it on uh, the uh, Facebook page a little later on. And our little dog, she's just wandering around checking out things. Doing her job. That's what she gets paid for. Amen. <laughs> she, so if y'all hear her in the background, <laughs> she's looking at us there like, I know you're talking about me. <laughs> so Psalms number 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth and buckler shall be uh, his his truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. 
A thousand will fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. And only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. Uh, in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Glory to God. Amen, Pastor Cheryl. Good morning. I am... Um... You know, with this COVID virus, y'all, I'm just, I have just been praying to God that he would have mercy on us, that he would um, have mercy upon us enough to stop this plague. Mm -hmm. And as I was praying and studying, I don't know, have, have I ministered on David? And the, A little um, bit, I think, on Wednesday. In the plague. In the plague. Yeah, I think you ministered a little bit on that. If not Wednesday, a little bit on last week. So. Well, I wanna I wanna kind of go over that again yes, because yeah. that that keeps it keeps it's in me. Yeah. It it keeps yeah. coming up yeah. in me. Yeah. Because you know, David, I, I was studying the chronicles and um, you know, the chronicles really deals with the especially sec second chronicles it really deals with the kings of judah mm -hmm. and how they got there and why they got there and mm -hmm. why the kingdom was split mm -hmm. and but it, it dealt with david's life also as king yes and one of the things that stuck out uh in me is that you know it reminds me so much of what's going on today mm -hmm. you know there was part of Israel that loved God, that served God, and then there was that other part that did what they wanted to do. Yes. And then that other part really brought this on God's anger was kindled against Israel. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, I, I just been meditating on that this week. And what happened was that David numbered the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And when I used to study that, I thought that you know, God was angry because David numbered the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. But then when you read a, about that in the Kings, mm -hmm. they, God was not angry with David because he numbered the children of Israel. Right. The, king, the King's version of the story says that God provoked David mm -hmm. to number the number the children of Israel. Right. Mm -hmm. And so in him provoking David, the king said that because God was angry with Israel. Mm -hmm. And so after he numbered the children of Israel, God told David, now you got, you got three things that I, that you can have a choice over. Mm -hmm. He said, you can have three days of plague, mm -hmm. three months mm -hmm. of your enemies chasing you, mm -hmm. and three years of famine. Or three. Or three years of famine. Mm -hmm. So David say, I, I don't want to fall into the hands of my enemies. Yes. He say, God, if I fall, I want to fall into your hands. Mm -hmm. Because in your hands is mercy. Yes. And people, we got to know that. Yes. God is a merciful mercy. God. Mercy. And we have to plead for his mercy upon this nation. Yes. And so... So David chose the shorter version. He said, okay, I'll, I'll take the three days. Mm -hmm. And you know, for us, three days pass by, uh, you know, it's, it's a short time. Yeah. You know, three days, but to have three years of famine, that's that's a lot. That's a lot. But in, that, in those three days, God sent an angel, and he killed a lot of people. Mm -hmm. He kill, I think it was, it was either from... He either killed 70,000 or 80,000. Yeah. I, I can't yeah. remember right now. But it was one of those numbers. Mm -hmm. 
And so God, he told the angel, he looked at, at all the devastation mm -hmm. and all the people that were dead. And he lamented mm. that he did this. Yes. And, and so, y'all, that was the mercy of God. Yes. God is merciful. Yes. yes oh, he is. he is so merciful. Yes, and David is. knew that. Yes, yes. David knew that God was merciful. Yes. And so he he often, you know, when he had that baby with Bathsheba, that first child, mm -hmm. and he prayed and he his his thinking was maybe God will change his mind. Yeah. Maybe God will have mercy. Yes. For his mercies are new every, every morning. morning. Yes. And so I'm looking at this and I say, well, God, maybe you will have mercy on America. Mm -hmm. Maybe you will have mercy on not only on America, on this world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to look to see how many people have died from this plague mm -hmm. that's in this land. Yes. And that's that's in the land, and I mean the land, I mean on the earth. Yes, yes. And so let's go before the throne of God, people. And this week. Let's pray for mercy. Mercy, yes. Because this thing is this thing is spreading like wildfire. And these people, they don't have the sense enough mm -hmm. to submit to God. They yes. they don't have the the knowledge. They just think that, oh, this is and the young people are in the hospitals now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so let's ask God to have mercy. Yes. Because God is all wise, He's all knowing, yes. and most of all, He's all powerful. Yes. And He has the power to stop this plague. He's the one. Yes. Has the power to stop this plague. Yes. Yes. So, Heavenly Father, we yes. thank you. We come before your throne of grace this thank morning. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thanking you that you are God and God alone. Yes, Lord. Besides you, there is no other. No you other. are all powerful. Yes, you, you are. are all knowing. Yes, you are. And you are all, you are everywhere at the same time. Yes, Lord. Yes. You are omnipresent. Yes, Father. God. Yes. You mm. are omniscient, mm. and we thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father. For everything that you are. Yes. You are the great I am. Yes. Whatever we need you to be, yes. you are that right now. Yes. And Heavenly Father, I know that there is a plague in this world, mm -hmm. and it is hitting our land the most, dear God. It is yes. hitting America the most. Yes. And we lift up everybody that's in the hospital. Yes. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that Twenty Son is doing better. Thank you, Father. But we lift up her sister, Sheila, God. Yes, Lord, yes. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you are able to go into that hospital. Yes, Lord, And yes. touch her body, yes, dear God. Yes, yes, yes. Heavenly Father, we pray for the Ghosty family. Yes, Lord. We pray for people that have lost other people. Yes. Doing this plague, God, this is hard. Father. Yes, it is. This, because this did not have to happen. Mm -hmm. If our country just had to heed the warnings, God. Yes, yes, Lord. But Father, you know all of this. Yes. You know all of this, yes, God, do, and people are suffering, Father. Yes, yes. And we ask for your mercy. Mercy, dear, Father. God. Have mercy. Not only mercy on America, yes. but mercy everywhere this disease is running rapid. Yes, Lord. Mercy in Mexico. Mercy in Brazil. Mercy yes. in Spain. Dear, yes, God. Lord. Yes. Mercy in Italy. Yes. In China, where it originated. Yes, God. yes. Oh, have mercy have upon mercy South for Africa, dear yes. Father. Yes, Lord. And the countries that are in Africa that are suffering. God. Yes. Oh, Heavenly Father, we know that you are the one who can just wave at the yes. at a wave of a hand. Yes. It could go away. Yes, Lord. At the blow of your nostril. Yes. It could go away. Yes, Lord. At the whisper of your voice. Yes, Lord. It could it cease, cease and go no further. Yes, Lord. So, Father, we ask for mercy at this time. Yes, Lord. Lord. Mercy in this nation. Yes. Mercy in our hospitals. Yes. Mercy in the rooms of people that are in their houses of people that are in their bedrooms. Yes. Gasping for breath. Yes, Lord. Oh, God, if you don't breathe breath into him, you breathe on man, Yes, God, Lord, yes. And he became a living soul. Yes, Lord. Be the breath of those that can't breathe yes, right Lord. now in the yes. name of Jesus. Yes, We thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the doctors that are on the front line. Thank you, Father, yes. And we bind these selfish spirits that's going to yes. go to these bars and do what they want to do and put their 
their lives in danger, yes. then they have to go oh, to the Jesus. hospital and put the doctors and the nurses who are on the front line in danger. Yes, Lord Jesus. I know we live in a selfish society. Yes, These Lord. people are selfish. We dwell among selfish people. Yes, Lord. Like Jeremiah said, I mm. dwell among people with unclean lips. Yes, Lord. We dwell among people with black hearts, yes, dear Lord. God. Yes. Hearts, stony hearts, the disobedient hearts. Yes. The hearts of privilege. I'm going to do what I want to do. I yes, got my Lord. constitutional right. Yes. Oh, God, mm. have mercy Lord, upon God. us. Up. According to thy love and Rose, kindness Lord, and multitude Lord. of tender mercy. Yes, Lord. David knew your mercy so clear. Yes. He wrote about them. He spoke about them. Yes. He lived about your mercy. Yes. Dear God. yes. He experienced your mercy. Yes, Lord. Have mercy upon Have mercy, America. Father. Have mercy. Have mercy upon this world. Have mercy, Father. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you. In a little while, this shall be over. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Cheryl. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to get ready and get into the word on today. Um, just to uh, remind you again that uh, we'll be at the church on this afternoon from 1230 to 130, handing out the uh, communion packs for those of you who like to participate in communion on this evening at 6 o'clock. So uh, make sure you stop by. Stop by and pick up your communion pack. Turn your Bibles to Habakkuk. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Habakkuk, the Old Testament book of Habakkuk. And uh, that this will be, of course, this is our foundational uh, passage of scripture uh, that we are reading for uh, this theme for the year of the power of a God-given vision. The power of a God-given vision. And the uh, theme passage of scripture is Habakkuk chapter number 2 and uh, verses 1 through 4. Background detail to uh, very quickly uh, Habakkuk and the nation of Judah were facing judgment. God was about to raise up a heathen king and a heathen nation to uh, take his people into 70 years of exile to judge them because of their own sin. They had ignored God for over 400 years. God pleaded with them to come to him. To He pleaded with them through the prophets. He used the prophets to call them back to him. And they ignored God. And uh, because they ignored God, uh, God said, well, you know what? I'm going to send you all into exile. And you're going to be there for a while. Mm -hmm. Habakkuk's contemporary, uh, Jeremiah, was also responsible for giving the same message that they were going into exile for 70 years. And so he told them to settle in. You're going to be here for a while. Have your children to marry. Uh, have children because when they come out, we want them to be uh, very numerous, a vast crowd of them, because I know the plans that I have for you, plans to give you hope in the future, uh, not to harm you, And uh, but you're going to be here for a while. Mm -hmm. So settle in. Amen. Now, uh, back of chapter number two uh, says, starting in verse number one, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me. And what I will answer when I am corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak, and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come to pass. Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. So uh, as Habakkuk waited to hear from God, God finally spoke to him and told him exactly what he was going to do. And, and it came in the form of revelation. That's what the vision was, a revelation. This is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to use this heathen king. He's going to judge you. All right. And the heathen king, of course, was King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon and the nation that he used to judge them was Babylon. All right. Um, now go in your Bibles to 
uh, the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. And we're going to do part 7 today of the rapture and the second coming of Christ. I pray that you all will like our page and share it and maybe even tag people uh, to come in and be a part of this so they can listen in on what we're dealing with here because this is what we're talking about here, the rapture and the second coming of Christ. This is vitally important because Jesus, his return at the rapture of the church is inevitable, and which simply means that it could happen at any time. Mm -hmm. All the prophecies have really been fulfilled. There's nothing else that needs to take place before Christ comes in the clouds and takes the church out of the world. Nothing else needs to be done. The Antichrist is alive in the world. The spirit of the Antichrist has been in the world for the last 2,000 years. So we are ripe for the Lord to come with the angels and, and throw his sickle in and, and harvest the church, the crop, and take us out of this world so that the tribulation and then the great tribulation can take place on the earth. We're going to deal with some good stuff here on the day. But on last week, in our message, we saw uh, how Paul uh, wanted the Thess Thessalonians to remember the things that he had taught them before, the, the, before concerning the restrainer and how the son of perdition, the Antichrist, could not be revealed until his time. It was his time to be revealed. All right? So he's in the world but nobody really knows who he is. People think they know who he is. Say, yeah, that's him. That's got to be. No, no. He's not going to be revealed until it's his time. Jesus. Until it's his time. Then when we read some of the characteristics of the Antichrist, then we say, no. <laughs> Antichrist is going to be intelligent. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You, Bishop, God always give us a, us a precursor. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. He, he always, you know, it's, he always sends something that looks like this is it. Absolutely. Until the real thing gets there. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so we identified the restrainer on, or the the one who is restraining on last week as the Holy Spirit. He is the one who restrains the world from complete evil being released into the earth realm. We also stated that when the church is raptured into heaven, the Holy Spirit's restraining influence will be removed. Although the Holy Spirit is omnipresent because he's God, his presence will remain on the earth, in the earth realm, but he will not restrain the Antichrist from committing evil acts upon the people who are left behind. Now, you got to get that. You got to remember it. The only reason why all hell has not broken loose on the earth, in the earth realm, upon the people of God, is because the restrainer, the Holy Spirit, is here. And he is restraining the evil one from being allowed to do whatever it is that he wants to do. However, because the Holy Spirit's presence will remain in the earth, people will have an opportunity to be saved during the tribulation and the great tribulation. Now, his restraining influence will be removed at the rapture, but his presence will still be here. Remember, he's omnipresent. He's God. Therefore, people will be allowed, uh, they'll have an opportunity, rather, to be saved. And we also saw how Israel will be saved during the tribulation. And there will be a great multitude of people being saved as well. Now today we're going to go further into this. And in this second chapter, I want you to look at two verses, uh, three verses rather, verses 8 through 10. And it says, and then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth and that they might be saved. Wow. Wow. So 
here's the first thing that we want to kind of get into is, is the deceit and the doom of the lawless one, all right? The deceit and the doom of the lawless one. So in verse 3 of the second chapter, Paul introduced us to the man of lawlessness or the son of perdition. And the man of lawlessness will be revealed before the return of Christ. Now, another thing that will occur before Christ returns will be the apostasy. I'm, I'm repeating these things because I want you to remember how things are going to, how things are laid out and how they're going to come to pass. Uh, the lawless one is going to be revealed at his time and the great falling away is going to happen. And so Paul told the Thessalonians about both of these events in an effort to settle their fears concerning the return of Christ. There were false teachers who were trying to convince the Thessalonians that Christ had already returned. And that was the reason for their present suffering. And you'll notice in verse 3 that the man of lawlessness is revert, referred to as the son of perdition. This means that he is eternally lost. However, he will exalt himself above everything that is considered divine, and despite the fact that he's evil uh, himself, the, the man of lawlessness was not new to the Thessalonians. You'll notice in verse 5 that Paul told these young Christians about the man of lawlessness while he ministered in Thessalonica. Paul told the Thessalonians that the man of lawlessness, the son of perdition, was presently at work, but he was being restrained. That's what we dealt with on last week. Now look at this. In verse number eight, we're going to deal with the destruction of the lawless one. The destruction. I like this part. This is going to be good. It's going to bless you. I promise you that. Amen? Amen. Um, it says, and then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Ooh. So once the restraint is taken out of the way, the man of lawlessness will be revealed. Either the man of lawlessness does not know it, or he does, he, he does not believe the revelation of himself will mean his doom. But the man of lawlessness will be restrained by that which comes from the mouth of Jesus Christ when he returns. He will be slain, I'm sorry, by, by that which comes out of the mouth of Jesus Christ when he returns. Now, the word consume, analisco, means to destroy. It means to take away or to consume. Uh, if you will notice in verse 7, Paul said that the restrainer of the lawless one will be taken out of the way. He will completely, he will be completely consumed. The lawless one will cease to exist. So there will come a time when the Antichrist will cease to exist because Jesus is going to completely mm -hmm. take him out of the way, consume him. Mm -hmm. uh, the doom of the lawless one will occur without much effort on the part of Jesus. Now, I like this piece right here because Jesus will destroy him with the breath of his mouth. Uh, the word breath, uh, pneuma in the Greek, speaks of a breath of air that comes from the mouth of Jesus. The word breath speaks of the vital principle of a person. The completeness of who Jesus is will bring down the lawless one. The lawless one will be doomed by the power of the mouth of Jesus. All Jesus has to do is speak and whatever he says will be done. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, yeah. Now, now watch this because I, uh, the, this is how he created everything in the beginning. And he, he spoke it. And it was. Look at Psalms 33, verse 6 and then verse 9. Verse 6 says, By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. 
So God just spoke. Mm -hmm. And whatever he said, it was. He said, let it be. Mm -hmm. And whatever God said, it became. Amen. Verse number nine says, for he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Glory to God. So all God did in the beginning of creation is he spoke. Yes. And whatever God said came to pass. Jesus spoke to a fig tree, remember in Mark chapter number 11, and he cursed it to its root and the fig tree died just because he spoke a word. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Hebrews chapter one, verse number three says, he holds all oh, things man. together yeah. by the word yeah. of his power. Ooh, all Jesus has to do is speak a word yes. and it's all over for the lawless one. Yes. Look, this towel, this towel, everybody can see this towel is brown. But if Jesus says this towel is red, it's going to be red. Somebody <laughs> say amen up in here. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, when, when Jesus returns, he will put an end to the lawless one and the lawless one uh, and what he's doing and what he has done. Uh, the plans and the programs of the lawless one will be defeated when Christ returns. And when we talk about Christ returning, we're talking about uh, his returning to the earth, his second advent. The rapture, at the rapture, Christ is coming in the clouds, not to the earth. Remember, I'm, I'm repeating myself. I'm teaching by repetition so we can always remember these things. He comes in the clouds to rapture the church at the rapture. But at the second coming, which will be seven years later, mm -hmm. he comes to the earth mm -hmm. to deal with the enemies of God, the Antichrist, Satan, and the false prophet. He's going to deal with all of them. Now, when Christ returns... Um, the plans and the program of the lawless one will be defeated. And this means that his plans and program are temporary. They're temporary. They're not permanent. And this is a picture of the fact that Jesus is more powerful than the lawless one. And Jesus will bring immediate and effortless doom to the lawless one. That word brightness there in verse number eight. Uh, epiphania in the Greek, uh, it speaks of Jesus speaks of his splendor and his greatness. The word brightness speaks of the manifestation of Jesus. And when Jesus returns, he will return in magnificence and power. You talk about a grand entry. Mm -hmm. Come on here, somebody. Yeah. You know, all this little stuff folk be doing on the red carpet and they dressed in their best clothes and all the Versace's and Armani's and that ain't nothing Jesus compared to what Jesus, he gonna show them how it's done, yeah. baby. Yeah. <laughs> he's gonna come on a white horse and he's going to come to the earth realm and when he comes, everybody is going to know yes. that this is Jesus yes. the Christ, yes. Yes. the word of God. Come on, somebody say amen. The Messiah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, he's going to show them how it's done. Yes, yes. Now listen to this. Listen to this. This word epiphania is found three other times in the New Testament where the Apostle Paul writes to Timothy. Uh, and it says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, and then verse number 8, he says, uh, verse 1 says, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing, that's that word epiphania, and his kingdom. And in verse number eight, uh, finally, there is laid up for me a crown, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing, epiphania. And then finally, he writes about it again in Titus chapter 2, verse 13, where it says, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. All these verses speaks to the glorious appearing of Christ. Glory to God. Let's read verse number nine. Now, because verse number nine deals with the deceit of the lawless one. It says, the coming of the lawless one 
is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying, lying wonders. Woo. The lawless one will gain such a great following because of his activity. His activity is motivated by Satan. Since Satan has lived in heaven, he knows what looks what good looks like. So he's able to make good look evil and evil look good. Mm -hmm. Somebody ought to say amen in the church. Amen. This is why Paul said the lawless one who, who would come in accord with the activity of Satan. The lawless one will come with power, signs, and lying or false wonders. Paul is showing us here that the lawless one will counterfeit the power of God. He'll make it look like look just like it's God, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's counterfeit. Uh, the word power is dunamis in the Greek, and it's used concerning the power of the Holy Spirit. So uh, this means that the lawless one will do things that will look like those things done by the Holy Spirit. This means a miracle worker may be of heavenly origin. Because so many people live without discernment, they will not know the difference yeah. between what is done in the power of the Holy Spirit yeah. and what is done by the lawless one. Let me, let me say this again because this means a miracle worker may not be, may not be of heavenly origin. And a lot of people won't be able to discern whether this is of God or whether this is of the lawless one. And this is why it's so important for Christians to remain in the teachings of their, listen to this, God-given leader. This is why it's so important for you to come to church. Mm -hmm. This is why it's so, I know we can't come to church right now, but it's good yeah. that you're tuning in. But it's so important for you to have a God-given pastor, mm -hmm. a man of God who has been called of God to teach you the word. Now, all I know you got folks say, I, I teach myself at home. You, you keep on thinking that. But you haven't been called by God to be anybody's pastor. Mm -hmm. God calls pastors to teach you his truth, yes. to reveal to you his truth. Yes. And you can learn some things at home, but there's certain things that God is going to reveal yes. to his man of God, yes. or his woman of God to reveal to you. Yes. And so it's not wise for you to think that you can learn all this on your own. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So a God-given leader, <clears throat> a God-given leader, leader rather leads uh he will teach rather the truth and will teach it without compromise mm. now listen to what jesus said here in matthew's gospel chapter 7 verses 21 through 23 this is what he says he says not everyone who says to me lord lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my father in heaven Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Mm -hmm. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Woo, Jesus. Jesus emphatically states that there will be many in the church who will minister in his name and on, believe man. they are his servants. Ooh, Yet in reality, he does not know them. Ooh, Lord, to escape the deceit of the last days, church leaders or any believer must be totally committed to the truth and the righteousness revealed in God's word and not consider ministerial success as the standard by which to judge their relationship to Christ. Now, let me say this, because oftentimes when you see a popular preacher, you think that God has to be with that man. He had that. Look at it. Look at his ministry. It's successful. It's huge. God has to be with that man. If it wasn't, then that church wouldn't be that big or his, his ministry wouldn't be so huge. Don't misjudge 
success yeah. for God's standard of righteousness and holiness and truth. Mm -hmm. Because in the last days, mm -hmm. people will heap for themselves Come teachers with itching ears. Mm -hmm. They want to be in a church where the preacher doesn't deal with their stuff. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't be messing with my stuff. Yeah. Just let me come to church. Let me pay my, my dues. Yeah. My time. My, let, me, let me work in the church. I give them money. Mm -hmm. I do whatever. But don't make me accountable. Mm -hmm. I, don't wanna, I don't wanna hear mm -hmm. about my sin. Mm -hmm. I know I'm shacking up. Yes. I know I'm committing fornication. Yes. I know I got a woman on the side or a man on the side. Yeah. I know I know I do. I know I'm doing all that. I don't need you to tell me that. Just let me come. Let's have happy church yeah. every Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. You know, let us go home feeling good about ourselves. Yes. Let us live our best yes. day. Yes. You know, it's yes. gonna be all right. Yes. yes. Just let me know it's going to be all right. Yes, yes. And when I get ready yes, to get right. when I get ready. When I get ready. Mm -hmm. When I get ready, I'll get right mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of church that people love today. Yeah. And people don't want to be in a church where the truth is being preached mm -hmm. and taught. They don't want to be where uh, the Holy Spirit will convince convict you of your sin. Help us today, Father. And help you to repent and turn away from that sin and come back to God. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, if you're in your sin, mm -hmm. when the rapture takes place, more than likely you're going to be left yeah, in your sin. Behind. Yes. God yes. preach the truth. God tell people the truth. Amen. Amen. Listen, in verse 23 of that seventh chapter, Matthew, Jesus said, I never knew you. Mm -hmm. These words of Christ make it unmistakably clear that no one can proclaim the gospel in the name of Christ, drive out demons and perform miracles in the name of Jesus while they themselves have no genuine saving faith in Christ. Ooh, Lord Jesus. Now, that... Listen to this. Uh, scripture teaches that fervent gospel preaching, apparent zeal for righteousness, and the working of miracles can be performed in this age under the influence and the power of Satan. Paul warned us in 2 Corinthians chapter number 11, verse 14 and 15, that Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. And therefore, it's no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. As we've seen in 2 Thessalonians, uh, we've seen in verse number 9 and we've seen in verse number 10, Paul made it clear that miraculous signs and wonders can be done by the working of Satan. And then number two, God sometimes overrides Satan's activity in false preachers in order to bring salvation or healing to those who sincerely respond to the word of God. It's always God's desire that those who proclaim the gospel be righteous. Yet, when an evil or immoral person preaches God's word, God can still work in the hearts of those who receive his word and uh, with commitment to Christ. God does not endorse any unrighteous preacher of the gospel, but he will endorse the Bible truth and those who accept it in faith. Mm -hmm. In other words, in other words, because people talk about preachers and how in the world could that preacher be crooked and have all those people, you know, in his church, if he's preaching some word and God endorses the word that he mm -hmm. preaches. Mm -hmm. He doesn't endorse the wicked and evil preaching, mm -hmm. but it's the word. People can still be saved by the word of God and not by the wicked preaching. And so in the last days, we're going to see the lawless one uh, who will be able to perform signs and lying wonders and people will be deceived by this. Now, look at this, because the lawless one will also perform these signs, Simeon in the Greek. The word was used by John in reference to the miracles. 
Now, this word also speaks of miracles performed with an intent to show spirituality. Uh, the word speaks of miracles that confirm divine authority. And this means that the lawless one will do miracles that will make him look as though he was operating in the power of God and on the authority of God. Paul is saying that the lawless one will perform miracles that will make him look like what he is not. Paul also used the word lying wonders, pseudoteros in the Greek, to describe the activity of the lawless one. The word speaks of things done in the realm of the supernatural with the intent of deceiving. Now, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 24, he says, False Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive. And if possible, even the very elect will be deceived. Mark also wrote about that in his gospel over in Mark chapter 13, verse 22. But now this means that the lawless one will be working hard to lead Christians astray as well as keep sinners from knowing the truth of the gospel. The power, signs, and wonders are all done through the energy generated by Satan. Uh, this is the thing that makes the lawless one so dangerous. He, he'll operate in the power of Satan, and he will look like he's operating in the power mm. of God. Mm. So we usually think of the activity of Satan in terms of bodily lust. You know, when we talk about, you know, Satan and sin all the time, a lot of times people talk about, you know, uh, lusting of the flesh and uh, fornicating and homosexuality and adultery and all that. But that's, that's, that's not the only thing. But as you can see, the lawless one will operate freely without any seemingly immoral acts. He will operate in the realm of the spiritual. And again, this is why it's so important to know, believe, and practice the word of God in its purity. Uh, this word of caution to people who are always looking for something new and exciting. This new and exciting may very well be the activity of the lawless one. You know how people want something new and fresh. Yeah. This yeah. is fresh yeah. from heaven. This is a uh, fresh anointing. This is fresh oil. It may not be from God. Mm -hmm. may be fresh. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing new under the sun. <laughs> Glory to God. Mm -hmm. and, and I hear preachers all the time mm -hmm. trying to come up with something new. New and fresh. Ain't nothing new and fresh. Mm -hmm. and nothing new under the sun. You got to be very cautious and very careful. I'm, I'm, I'm very skeptical of when I hear preachers say stuff like, I'm going to tell you some things that you've never heard anybody ever say before. Man, please. Please. If you're coming up with some new stuff, then the new stuff you're coming up with ain't in this. The 66 books. And then when you read the end of the 66 books, it tells you that if you add anything to the words of this prophecy, uh, your, your punishment will be even greater. Lord have mercy. Let me finish. Let me close. Verse number 10. Got to close. Because, see, we, we've looked at the deceit of the lawlessness, we, lawless one. Uh, lawless one. Uh, we looked at the doom of the lawless one. But now we're going to look at the doom of his followers, the people who follow him. Jesus. Verse number 10 says, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Look at this. Here in verse number 10, Paul is seen dealing with the deception of the lawless one and those who follow him. The lawless one will deceive in every way he possibly can. He will be successful because his evil will be masked by good. The real issue will be the lawless one is that they have rejected the truth of the gospel. Rejected the truth of the gospel makes it impossible for those who follow the lawless one to be saved. If you reject the gospel, you can't be saved. Mm -hmm. 
You can't be saved. If you reject the gospel, you cannot be saved because the gospel is about the king, mm. the king of the kingdom, and his name is Jesus. Paul said that those who follow the lawless one perish. The word perish, apolumi, means to follow, uh, it means the followers of the lawless one share in his doom and his destiny. They will be ruined. They will be eternally lost. They will experience eternal death. In fact, since the word perish is in the present tense, this means the followers of the lawless ones are perishing now. Mm, mm, mm. Their doom and destruction has already begun. And the road that leads away from God and the gospel is a road that leads to doom and destruction. This is the road traveled by the lawless one and all who follow him. Jesus said uh, also in the gospel of Matthew that the way to eternal life is a narrow road. And few go thereby. Mm. But he said the way that leads to destruction is the broad mm -hmm. gate. Mm -hmm. And many people mm -hmm. go that way. Yeah. Many people go the broad way. As opposed to going through the narrow gate. Those who follow the longest one. Uh, will be lost despite how sincere they might be. They, they may be sincere. You, but you could be sincerely <laughs> wrong. Yes, sincerely lost. <laughs> Sincerity will not make up for rejecting the gospel. Rejecting the gospel leads to doom because rejection of the gospel is rejecting God and Jesus Christ. God gave Jesus and Jesus gave his life so that we may experience eternal life. And rejecting Jesus is a rejection of God's love. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. As I close here, I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of the Revelation, chapter number 20. And I want you to see the destruction of Satan, the lawless one, and the false prophet. During the tribulation, there will be a false prophet that arises. And this false prophet will command everyone to bow down in homage and worship to the beast. The beast, the law, man of lawlessness, the son of perdition. The Antichrist, one and the same person. And during the tribulation, the great tribulation period in particular, is when this false prophet, who will be the head of one world religion, false religion, and the person that they will worship during that time is the Antichrist. They will have to take his mark in their forehead and on their right hand. Everyone will have to bow down and worship the Antichrist. But just as I said to us earlier in this message that his doom is coming, the doom of the lawless one, the man of lawlessness, his doom is coming. Look at Revelation chapter 20. This will happen after the thousand year reign of Christ. Look at verse number seven. It says, now, when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from the prison, from his prison. Now, at the beginning of the thousand year reign of Christ, which takes place after the battle of Armageddon, Christ uh, re returns to the earth with all of the saints. We reign with him on the earth for 1,000 years. During that period of time, at the beginning of that thousand year reign, and it's in this chapter, Satan will be bound in the bottomless pit. That's his prison. He will be bound there for 1,000 years. At the end of that time, he will be allowed to be released upon the earth to deceive. Look at this, verse number 8. 
and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose number is as the sand of the seas. They went up, the, listen to this, they went up on the breadth of the earth and the surrounding and, and surrounding the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. Now listen to this piece right here. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now the word torment means that they will feel the pain, the suffering. It says day and night for how long? Forever. Okay. Now, the Jehovah's Witnesses teach that when people are cast into the lake of fire, their bodies will be quickly consumed, burn up, and that's it. It's over with. Uh, because they don't believe in eternal condemnation and damnation and punishment. Because spirits cannot suffer is what they believe. Mm -hmm. Satan is a spirit. The Antichrist, the false prophet, they will be in bodily form. But when they are cast into the lake of fire, the Bible says, and they will, false, the beast, Satan, and the false prophet will be tormented day and night forever. Mm -hmm. Forever. How long is forever? I give this analogy all the time. If you were to count every grain of sand that's on planet Earth, by the time you finish counting the last grain of sand on planet Earth, on every beach on planet Earth, by the time you have completed your counting of the, every grain of sand, eternity, will have only just begun. But then look at verse number 11. It says, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. And there was found no place for them. I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Let me break it down real quickly. This is the white throne judgment. This is not the bema or the judgment seat of Christ. When the rapture takes place, the believer goes to the bema. We are judged for the works that we performed after our salvation, after we were saved. Our rewards in heaven will be determined by what we did for Christ on the earth after we were saved. Our, our judgment will not determine whether or not we remain in heaven or cast out of heaven into the lake of fire. No. You go before the, be the, the beamer, you're going to remain in heaven. It just determines your rewards. But in the white throne judgment, the Bible says that books were open, opened and the book of life. Now, books, that means, that's plural. That means there'll be many books. And those books that are open are the books of deeds, works. This is what non-believers did while they were on the earth. All of the times that they had an opportunity to be saved and they rejected the gospel, they rejected Christ, all of the good that they did, all of the bad that they did. And let me tell you this, there's no scale of balances. Mm -hmm. You know, your good outweigh your bad. You get to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. And if you if you got more bad than good, you're going to no, 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 no. The book of deeds determines the degree of judgment that you'll receive, torment that you receive in the lake of fire. Now watch this. Watch this. It, it goes on to say in the next verse, 
uh, these, the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. So no matter where a person's body is, no matter how a person died, that body will be resurrected. And that person will have to stand before the white throne judgment. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. How is it that a person's name cannot be found in the, uh, the book of life? When you reject Christ, when you take the mark of the beast, as opposed to giving your life to Jesus, your name will not be in the lake of fire. You'll have to stand there. Yeah, yeah, the book of life. I'm sorry. Thank you. It will not be found in the book of life. You have to stand there and the books will be opened. Jesus. Your name is not here. Mm. Now we're going to look at your works, your deeds. You had all these opportunities. Mm -hmm. Why are you not here? <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. And so because you did all this, this is your punishment. Then you'll be cast into the lake of fire throughout all eternity and you'll be tormented. You'll feel the effects of it. Amen. If you're watching me on this live stream and you don't want to be cast into the lake of fire, and this message is not to try to scare you, but this is a message to plead with you to come to Jesus and be saved. Be, be one of those who stands before the beamer and receive a reward in heaven. I, I plead with you, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you would accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 6 and 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 say that if you would confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 9 say, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, and not by works, lest any man should boast. We're not saved because we're good people or because we get it right all the time. We're saved because God loved us, sent Jesus to die for us. On the third day, he raised him from the dead, and he seated him at his own right hand, and we came to Jesus Christ. And if you want to come to him and be saved, I want to lead you in a word of prayer so you can be saved. Amen? If you would, bow your heads and just repeat this prayer and just mean it with all of your heart, and God will save you today. Just repeat after me, dear God in heaven, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins and I turn away from them and I turn my life to you. I believe that Jesus is your son, that he died for all of my sins and you raised him from the dead. Lord Jesus, I ask that you would come into my life and save me. Guide me, lead me, and teach me to live this same life, this saved life. Right now, I receive you by faith as my Savior and my Lord. And I thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I give my life to you. Now fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me the overflowing measures. Give me the ability speak in other tongues and the power to bear witness of you. By faith, I receive the Holy Ghost. By faith, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. By faith, I have the tongues and I have the power. Thank you for filling me today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you said that prayer in a minute with all of your heart, God saved you from your sins and he filled you with his spirit and he's given you a brand new life in him, his very own life, eternal life. The next thing that you should do if you're not already a member, 
of a good Bible teaching church. I encourage you, find a good Bible teaching church. After the pandemic is over and we can all go back to corporate worship, find a good Bible teaching church and unite with that church and become a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ and then out of your obedience to him, be baptized. And if you live in 77089, 77075, 77034, or 77581 zip codes, you're close to New Covenant. You should come and unite with our church. We'd love to have you as a member. We're a great Bible teaching church, and we'd love to have you as a member of the New Covenant family and the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Pastor Cheryl, you got anything you want to share before we shut it down here? Well, I hope to see you all at, we're going to be there from 1230 to 130. Mm -hmm. So I hope to see a lot of you all. Come on out and get your packages packaged for your communion so we can all have communion together tonight. Amen. So Amen. Looking forward to seeing some of y'all we haven't seen since March. Ooh, been a while. I'm telling you, whoever, whoever thought I was told Bishop if somebody had told me this, we would not be coming to ch in the building. Yeah. Never would have believed that. Never would have believed that. So I pray that you guys would uh, come by and pick up your packs. You can drop off your tithe and your offering uh, while you're there. Also, if you need to swipe your card, we can take care of that for you as well. Uh, if you want to give online, of course, go to our website, New Covenant Christian Church Houston.com, and go to Givelify, and you can give on the website. Or if you have the church app, you can give on your app. Uh, if you don't have the app, but you do have an iPhone, iPad, uh, Android, Motorola phone, uh, you can go to your app store, look for New Covenant Christian Church Houston, download the app, it's free, set up your giving on where it says donate or giveify, and you can start your giving on our church app. Thank you to those of you who already do give on giveify. Amen. Amen. And finally... Uh, we'll be back this evening at 6 p.m. We're going to be praying for the sick, and then we're going to take communion together. And so I uh, encourage you and invite you to tune in with us this evening at 6, and um, uh, we'll take the Lord's Supper together. If you have prayer requests, just email us at nccp at sbcglobal.net or go on to your phone app and just uh, where it says prayer requests, uh, just send us a note, and we will take your prayer requests and pray for you on tonight for any manner of sickness or disease. And then remember, uh, Sunday school starts at 1030 by way of Zoom. So we have Sunday school classes for adults. Pastor Cheryl and I will be teaching uh, the money management class, and then we have our Sunday school teachers for the children. And the youth as well. So with that said, God bless you all. I'm going to be the executive producer and go turn us off. Have a zero. All right. Okay, bye, y'all. We're going to see y'all later. Amen.